the spirit of Detroit. This season was what it was, and now, you know, it's just time to work. Is there something that you can do? Um, is there, it's going to be, yeah, no, nah, I mean, like I said, I'm just going to be working on my footwork and work technique. Wherever it is to feel that, I'll be working on it. I mean, yeah, that's that's kind of like how I got here. It was just, you know, work ethic. So whenever it's, I mean, it could be two days. If I don't work out, I'm feel kind of off. So I love working out. I mean, all I know is what I need to do as to be a better defensive player for our defense. So, you know, that will work. There you go. Other than that, that's above my pay grade. This is Avery Giovanni. Welcome to Spirit of Detroit Podcast. I am your host, of course, Avery Giovanni. And today, we are going to get into some hot heater content. Man, I'm excited, man. Because I've been wanting to talk about this dude for a couple days now. I was supposed to put this video out uh, probably like a day ago, two days ago, right? Then I got motivated because the motherfuckers kind of like spoke on him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, And I was like, oh my God. All my competition is going to speak on this. And I spoke, I was going to speak on this same thing. But now I just have more fuel to the fire because it's fresh news for y'all. So, as you know, today is a triple upload day. Take a look at the first upload video I had, which was and is the kick return video. Haul it like Hester. If it's not called that, it's probably called the Detroit Lions haven't had this in 17 years. That's a good video, solid video. But today I want to get into, or to not, now I want to get into uh, Deshaun Hand, his future as a Detroit Lion and his defensive line. Now, first and foremost, I wanted to do the defensive line in full, but I cannot do that because that would be an hour video. Okay, you have eight motherfuckers on the defensive line, and really you have six, and I'm getting that in a minute. But you have eight motherfuckers on the defensive line. I just can't. I can't right at this point. <laughs> I can't. So check this out. Deshaun Hand had a promising rookie season. Three sacks his rookie year. The last two years, he's been in and off IR. He's been in and out of injury. He's been in the doghouse. We, it, it's like the dude didn't even exist. You know, like another draft pick we had. I'm going to get into him later. But, um... Deshaun Ham, man. I like him as a player. I, he's an overcomer. He overcame when he was at Alabama. If you didn't know, he was a fourth round pick by Detroit Lions, like pick 116, something like that. Um, he overcame a DUI arrest and still played out the season. He overcame being looked at as not strong enough, not short enough, not, you know, overcame all this stuff, all these obstacles, especially in his life, just to get here. You know, and he always worked hard to stay on the field. Now, you know me, injuries happen. Injuries happen. But big dog. And if you listen to Deshaun Hand, you can, you know, my cash app. <laughs> you can send me some money my way. But I'm a strong proponent of him being successful. He is one of the few lines I want to be successful. One, because he's swaggy as hell. Do you know, dude could be really the face of our defense if he applied himself. Two, uh, I think that he he's a good personality to have on the team. He's not a cost to the team. He's not an issue. But three, most importantly, he fits a certain niche that a 3-4 defense needs. Now, when he was initially drafted, he was what they called a five technique at Alabama. When Alabama was in 3-4 or 4-3 set. He was uh, something called a five technique, meaning he played on the left side of the tackle, on the left tackle. So what he offers you is the same thing like Michael Brockers offers you, right? So that thing is a run-stopping defender. You know, Michael Brockers has elite length, 6'5", 6'6", right? This dude, not so much. He's about 6'4", 297, but he's always played the run very well. Now, the reason he didn't get drafted high was because of the pass. 
he was never really considered a pass rusher. But the benefit to him is he can play inside and nose tackle. He can play in a 4-3 as a three technique. He has versatility. This is why I like him. But let's get into why I don't. My man has told, play, uh, apparently he dressed for 10 games. I didn't see his ass. I'm sorry. In 2020, he, he was there for 10 games. I didn't see his ass. His ass was placed on IR um, December 19th. He uh, was regulated to a backup role, played 50, played a, played 50 percent at 50 percent. Um, his first year, he was going crazy. I'm talking about uh, he was doing shit. He was he was sacking the quarterback, getting them hurries. He was doing a lot. And for a guy to be like pushing up 28 bench bench reps at 255 and shit like that you barely see him get off blocks now when he's in the game so his last good play was his rookie year you know what i'm saying most of his highlights that i've shown throughout this thing is his rookie year so i need big dog to help me out and, and do something so in 2020 he was regulated to a backup role played 50 percent at 50 percent on and off injury reserve he had an ankle injury, a groin injury, arm, this crazy little arm uh, injury. He's high ankle sprain. I mean, goddamn. And this is why I need Big Dog to get better. Because as now, as, as, as it stands now, the projected starting D-line in the 34 defense, in the 3-4 defense, is Anzaruke, a defensive end, McNeil at nose tackle, and Brockers at the other defensive end spot. A quarrel will be your outside uh, left linebacker. Flowers will be your, probably your outside right linebacker. And as it stands, I'm just going to throw these guys in here. You'll have Anzalone in the middle, and you'll have Collins in the middle. I don't think Derek Barnes is going to be an early contributor, right? This is my thing. Brockers is pretty much the same player as... I'm going to talk to I'm going to talk to him for a second. Deshaun, Brockers is literally your fucking clone in this defense. It's a wrap. Anzaruke is literally your fucking clone in this defense. Anzaruke came out and he provides pressure. All right. He provides pass rush and he can stop the run. Brockers, pure run defender. I wish he got more pressure. I wish he was better utilized. I wish he had more of himself, but he's old. You can probably take his position. McNeil, McNeil is a true nose tackle and Panisi is a true nose tackle. You play nose tackle and you were athletic as hell. You can get, you can beat guys with the swim move. You can beat guys when they get out the pocket. You had elite speed at 4'8". I need you to, bro, <laughs> you might get cut. For real, this player might get cut. Deshaun Hand has no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Because his combine numbers were solid. His hand size. His arm length. Everything Alabama. Everything literally points up. But this dude cannot stay on the field. I need this dude to realize that this is fourth year. It's your fourth year in the league. You had 2018. Great season. 2019, botch season. 2020, botch season. It is 2021. If you do not play well on today, it's a wrap for that fifth year option. This is the year where you should be trying to get a contract. And if you're not motivated by money, at, be, at least be motivated by Dan Campbell. <laughs> because you want to impress this new regime. Because that old regime had you in a doghouse, had you looking like a fool. I mean, you played for some hard coaches. You played for Nick Saban, and to go from Nick Saban to Matt Patricia, you probably ain't had no social life or nothing. But at the end of the day, I'm going to need you to step your game up, big dog. For real. And I say this kindly because, to me, picking Deshaun Hand, a person from Alabama, a person who, you know, just honestly 
I mean, he finished with seven tackles. His college. I mean, look at his college numbers. I don't even think old boy should be in the league for real. Let's 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 take a look. 2014, two sacks. 2015, three sacks. 2016, one sack. 2017, three sacks. He probably got drafted simply because of the three sacks. His tackles for loss, 3.5, 2.5. His best year probably was 2015 at Alabama. It's hard for me, man. It's like his fumble recoveries, one. His 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 total tackles in in, in, in three years is 52. That's that's Detroit side, right? He's been average to nowhere near the field this whole time. He's been average to nowhere. I need him to step up this year, big. For his sake, because Dan Campbell and his coaching staff, matter of fact, Brad Holmes is not playing with these motherfuckers. Brad Holmes will send your ass home. We 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 seen, I don't know if y'all know this, Carrion Johnson had an interview with Philadelphia, and he said the first words this dude said to him, Brad Holmes, the first words were, we're, we're releasing you. Brad Holmes is not going to extend his fool if he don't if he don't have a great fourth year. It's just a pure and simple. And Austin Bryant, Austin Bryant, I'm gonna give y'all another one because I was gonna make this a video, but I don't I don't know who Austin Bryant is. I know we wasted a draft pick on him, <laughs> but I don't know where he's been. I don't know where he is. I don't know. He's been injured for four years. <laughs> you gotta you got I gotta drink a beer to this, like for real, like. I need motherfuckers to be available. Y'all know how I feel about injuries. Injuries happen. You can't control them. Da, 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 da. I got it. But at this rate, nobody from this team is going to be around. <laughs> because this new era is not playing with you. You can't put up no mediocre numbers and get drafted. You can't put up no mediocre numbers and stay on the team. You can't put up no mediocre numbers, Stafford, and, and fucking get paid. You just can't. And that's where we at with it. Biggest keys to his success. The offseason means everything. You was picked in the fourth round, pick 114. Your offseason means everything. Your strength, your speed. We've seen Tavai, Jelani Tavai, probably the worst pick in the last five years by the Detroit Lions, including, not including Carrion Johnson or Jamal Agnew or any of them bums, but he's probably one of the worst second round picks. Man, that was just terrible. We've had some bad picks. But you see him. The coaches are raving about him now. He's making an impression. He lost weight. He got in shape. He changed his diet. He lost 40 pounds. He's flying around the football. He's watching film. This is what I need from players like Deshaun Hand. This is what I need. I want to wear a 93 jersey. I do. I think he cold. He's 25 years old. He's from Philadelphia. He, he, he's, he's been around tough cities. He's seen toughness. I need him to I need him to show and prove, man. I need him to show and prove. I really do. Because honestly, honestly, if we think about it, the clock is ticking on some of these guys, man. The clock is ticking. The clock is ticking on Hulapati Vitae. The clock is ticking on uh What's that boy name? That stupid ass boy with the uh shit, number 90 fucking Forget his name. The clock is ticking on you motherfuckers. You motherfuckers have to produce. All right? <laughs> honestly. Honestly, man. I want Deshaun Hand to win, man. I want him to win. But if he can't do it, man. Next best, next man up. A personality don't win you games. <laughs> Even though he got a great personality, he does, conducts great interviews, all that shit. A personality do not win me no fucking football games. It's Xavier Giovanni. This is Spirit of Detroit Podcast. Like, comment, subscribe.